bit about each company. Uh, Avalara, uh, the big orange machine, I refer to them. they are um, been offering uh, sales tax automation solutions for quite some time now. Uh, definitely market leading sales tax automation solution available out there. Uh, so they automate the sales tax calculation within the sales order and invoice uh, and many, many ERP systems that are available out there. So chances are the ERP system that you're running, Avalara will have an integration with it. Uh, definitely speeds up the um, invoicing process and reduces errors uh, in that duplicate data entry process. Uh, we have Starship with us, and they specialize in automating your shipping processes, and they also uh, integrate with multiple ERP systems out there. They're definitely market share leaders in the, in the shipping uh, component, and they automate uh, all your shipping processes. They have a couple solutions, Starship and Shipgear. Starship is more of the enterprise-related solution, and Shipgear is more of an entry-level solution and you may uh, recognize either of those solutions. Um, and then we also have JobPack with us, and they do real-time manufacturing scheduling within your ERP system. Uh, they take the data in the ERP and make sure that they automate the processes so that you can quickly view your job times, operation times, quantities, status, all in real time, uh, and that's very critical for a lot of companies to be able to see real-time production status. So we're very excited to have JobPack with us today. And we're just going to take you through a little bit of the workflow uh, of what we'll be reviewing today. And this is really great to have you know these three providers with us today to talk about an integrated solution. And we're going to just so happen to demonstrate Dynamics GP, but this is how it would work with most of the ERP systems out there. I know that we have an assortment of end users out there that might not necessarily be on Dynamics GP, but that's just for demonstration purposes. And just know that um, all of these solutions have integrations with most of the common ERPs in the mid-market uh, that are available out there. So uh, an order comes in to your ERP system. We're going to be showing Dynamics GP. And Avalara will automatically calculate that sales tax um, that's important um, according to uh, all of the customer information. And that information will flow into, for our demonstration purposes, Dynamics GP, but that could be any ERP system, and into the sales order. And then JobPack will review that sales order and uh, automate your work order processing, the scheduling, understand what products need to go into assembling that um, order and make sure that you have all the quantity on hand to, to fulfill the uh, customer satisfaction. All that information will go back into Microsoft Dynamics GP or any other ERP system. And then um, the information will be sent to Starship. All the order information will be sent over to Starship, and Starship will take that information and optimize the shipment based on all the rules of the customer, based on location, based on all the carriers available to deliver the shipment at the best cost, all the shipping rules that you might have set for that particular customer. Then the information flows back into Dynamics GP with the tracking number and all of the shipping information associated. And then also the Avalara information carries over so that the sales tax is represented on the invoice. And then the accounts receivable is updated. And then the order is shipped out and GP is updated with all that fulfillment information. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and let Kristen with Avalara. And Kristen will be talking about simplifying the sales tax compliance aspect and automating the sales tax uh, within your ERP system and the calculation of the sales tax? Yeah, so perfect. Thanks. 
Um, so as, as she'd mentioned, you know, Avalara is a compliance company. We do three things. Um, we, the first thing we do is we automate sales tax. So we have pre-built integrations into 400 different ERP mobile applications. And the pre-built integrations allow you to quickly install um, our connector so that we can calculate sales tax. Um, for those of you that are not collecting sales tax or collecting sales tax on a small amount, we've got another product which is our exemption certificate module, which helps with the collection, retrieval, and storage of the exemption certificates. And then on the very uh, back side of things, we um, can help with filing and remittance of sales tax returns. So how does it work? Well, we're a cloud-based solution, and so what that means is that we have a, t a tax team here that manages the different rates, rules, and boundaries. So you install the connector um, into your environment, you tell us what your filing schedule and calendar is, and then we are able to um, you know, calculate sales tax instantaneous and file and remit your sales tax returns. So a lot of you guys may be doing this uh, manual, and I just wanted to show you uh, a couple things here. A lot of times people are collecting sales tax based on zip code. And this screen right here is showing you, as I drill into this specific area, uh, county, but it's showing you that there are um, you know, five different zip codes here. And when I drill into the zip code, you can see the different rates. And what I want to point out here is in the zip code 80111, you can see the different colors here, which means there are different taxing jurisdictions in a single zip code. So across the U.S., there are 11,000 taxing jurisdictions. And if you guys are um, managing this manually based on zip code, that might not be um, accurate. So our solution is based on the number of transactions that you guys process. So even if you are in one state processing, let's say 250 invoices, you know, it's really a great option to help um, mitigate your risk. So just a few of our integrations. I know we had talked about Microsoft Great Plains, and I'll show you a couple things on the Great Plains side. But I also know that we have people here that um, are using QuickBooks, potentially Sage. We have an OEM agreement with Sage, so it's Sage Sales Tax, Epicor, uh, the same type of thing. So pretty much any ERP uh, e-commerce solution, and I'll come over here to the e-commerce side of things, we are going to have an integration for you. And I'm happy to talk to you specifically about your integration and how that might work. The thing that I wanted to show in Great Plains, just in case we've got a couple Great Plains users here, what we do in Great Plains and in any of the ERP uh, solutions out there is we change the tax uh, schedule ID. So right now you guys are used to managing multiple tax schedule IDs. When we go into your environment, and in this example of Great Plains, we change the tax schedule ID to Avatax. So it's one tax schedule ID. You never have to worry about obtaining that, um, updating that, maintaining that. The Avatax is going to be the trigger for your ERP or your e-commerce to um, encrypt your transactional data so it, it is sent up to the cloud so we can calculate sales tax. And so we calculate sales tax in about four tenths of a second. So in your system, nothing will be changed. What you will see is just sales tax calculated um, instantaneously. So the first thing I wanted to do, we have a couple different portals, but the portal that I wanted to jump into here was our exemption certificate management. Here we work with customers that have roughly 50 or more exemption certificates. So 50 would be the bottom line of the number of exemption certificates that you have. But a lot of times what we find is that, you know, customers, um, you know, you have a process in place. In, in order to get an exemption certificate. Either you know you are not charging sales tax and you hope to get the exemption certificate later, 
or you're going to charge sales tax until you get the exemption certificate. This allows you to send an email um, to your client to say, hey, thanks for signing up. Can you please click on the link below and build your exemption certificate? They fill out the questions online. They're able to sign it and send it back to you, and that exemption certificate is automatically stored here. So then what you can do is you log into this portal, and you can manage your exemption certificate. So as opposed to storing these exemption certificates in a folder or a filing cabinet, they're all managed in the cloud. And so you can come in here and you can see I can, I'm going to go up here into the search button, and I can easily search on a um, company. And you can see that I searched just on Christine, and it pulled up all of the exemption certificates that have Christine in it. So it was an easy way for me to find the exemption certificate that I had on file. So the quick search is great. You can also come into this dashboard, and this dashboard just kind of gives you a snapshot of things that are happening. So it tells you expired customers just here. You can export this real quick. Um, new certificates that you have coming in, um, and it allows you to um, run those reports. And so you can you can build this this page right here any way that you want to. So you can quickly come in here and say, hey, I want to look at invalid certificates. And you can see on the bottom right-hand corner, I quickly added invalid certificates. And so it's easy to add reports and have those being displayed on your, um, your portal here. So you know if you're managing exemption certificates, each state has different rules, just like the different taxability rules. Um, you know, exemption certificates tend to expire based on, um, you know, the state. So for instance, Florida, you need a new exemption certificate every year. And so we're going to manage those rules. We're going to also um, allow you to have multi-jurisdictional exemption certificates and have that information here as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the portal that um, actually handles the calculation side of things. So if you're familiar with calculating sales tax, you know there are different rules and rates. Each state gets to pick up their own um, information. And so this is the portal where um, it's going to be stored in your ERP, but you can come here and you can quickly query information. So in this portal, for instance, I can come in and I can type in my invoice number if I wanted to, or I can do a search based on a date range. Um, and that's what I'm going to do right now. And pull up any invoice in the date range. And so you can see not only in terms of reducing your risk, um, it's going to allow you to um, be better prepared when you're going through an audit, show that you're using a documented, repeatable process. And so I can click on any of these invoices. Again, these blue lines would be your hyperlinks. So clicking on this information, and I'm going to expand this, because a couple things interesting about this. You can see that the order was placed in um, Washington on Bainbridge Island. It was then shipped to California. And so what we do know is Washington is a destination based, meaning that we have to calculate sales tax based on the destination. But there are states such as California that has mixed destinations. So we're going to manage those rules. If you look down here as well, Again, we're going to break down information for you. So we're going to break down state, county, city, and any special tax that might have happened. And you're going to be able to make this um, easily reportable for you guys. So you can see on a high level, I had three products here, right? The first product was tax. The last two items were not tax. Integrating these three systems into your system, the calculation and the exemption, we will then make the determination for you, which means, hey, if you don't have a valid exemption certificate on file, we will charge sales tax. And then what happens is the customer gets the invoice with the sales tax, and you are able to say, you know what, we sent you a notification three times, we really do need your exemption certificate, and then we can credit that tax back to you. 
In terms of filing and remitting your sales tax returns, um, just wanted to show you a couple things here. Um, you set up your filing calendar with us, which you say, hey, I'm in these states, and for instance, I'm in California, and I'm filing monthly. And then you say, um, you know, I'm in Washington, and I'm filing quarterly. So you set all of that up. And then on a on a monthly basis, we are going to produce a liability worksheet for you. So you're going to come here and I'll show you what that looks like. We're going to show you the sales numbers and the tax numbers that are associated with your um, returns. So I'm going to pull up California really quickly. So you're going to tell us, hey, I'm in California. I'm filing monthly, but I'm also doing quarterly. You can do paper returns, you can do electronic, we can handle both of those. But really what we do is we tell you the amount that needs to be remitted in that state. So in all those states, we will tell you the amount that needs to be remitted. And then we're going to ask you to, you know, take that 7178 We're going to ask you to balance that against your GL to confirm that's correct. And if it's correct, you know, you would come in here and you would select approve. And so once you hit approve in the states that you are in, we are going to pull, you can see here there's a total of 18,198.95. So we're going to pull that amount from your account once. And then we are going to pay the state, the local jurisdiction on your behalf. Um, once we do that, we will um, answer any service notices that you receive. And then you can see right here I clicked on filing archive. We're going to have an archive of all of your sales tax returns here. So again, it's going to be in one centralized spot for you to view. So I'm going to come in here and select November. And so you, again, can select any month, any year that you want. You can see the state, and you can see that, again, um, the um, sales tax return would be stored there in PDF form. And that is pretty much it. Um, so I'm happy to, um, you know, talk specifics about the different ERPs or e-commerce. Again, the great thing about our service is that it is, you know, based on the number of exemption certificates or the number of um, sales tax uh, transactions that you do. So it doesn't matter the size, you know, you guys all have the opportunity uh, to be compliant. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kristen. And David, you're on. Okay, thank you very much. To uh, start my end of it, um, I've just got one simple slide just to clarify what it is the, that we're doing. We have a module inside of Job Pack which is called the Enterprise Application Integration Module. And really what this does, it runs as a service, it interrogates and extracts data from an ERP database, and it passes this data directly into Job Pack, which means you can add real-time graphical scheduler to your existing ERP system. And in a, <coughs> excuse me, in a, a simple way, I'll we'll just kind of highlight this at the moment. Basically, the EIA module interrogates Microsoft Dynamics. We pull from that the routing of the job, which is typically the part number, work order number, delivery quantity, the routing time, the material details, and we push that into Job Pack. And basically, Job Pack then can provide a detailed view of all the planned work in progress, plus the visibility of progress and status of all work orders and all operations. So that's the simple one slide, which from um, 20,000 feet kind of gives us an idea of um, what it is we're doing. And the only other thing that I'll show you is uh, this, which really just emphasizes to people what I consider to be the, the two important aspects of the job pack system. So your screen is going to update and you're going to be looking at a, a graphic of a, uh, of a shop floor. Um, basically this is any sort of typical manufacturing, um, uh, excuse me, any manufacturing environment. And really there are two ends to the system. There's the end that everyone is familiar with, and this is where we are on job pack in a production office scheduling work. But the other end of the system, which is just as important and is sometimes forgotten, is the shop floor side. 
So we need a mechanism to show the operators what work they're supposed to do and in the order that they're supposed to do it in. And of course, we need the ability for the operator to report on the job to say what he's going to be doing. So there are the two ends to the system. And I'm going to start on this end here. So if you consider that I'm this guy sitting here with his back to you at the moment, and I'm on the job pack scheduler, this is what the job pack scheduler is going to see. So there are really two screens that allow the production engineer or the scheduler to view work on the shop floor. The one you're looking at now, which looks very similar to Microsoft Excel, and then the planning board, which is a, a graphical visualization of that. So I set a job up in the system. I've called it Manufacturing Order 1000. It's the ERP VAR webinar demo part. We're making 50 of these things. I gave it a part number. Our customer, who is Arrow Cryogenics, requires this to be done or be delivered on April the 21st, and we would have pulled this information from your ERP system. And Job Pack that understands the capacities available and it knows the routings is telling me that we're going to get it on April the 21st. So in the variance column, there's a zero and it's yellow. So if you come into work every morning and you look at this particular page, if everything's got a zero on it and it's a yellow color, then life is good. As soon as a job goes late, it turns orange. And a number of days late are shown here. So this job is three days late. And when a job goes more than five days late, it turns red. So immediately, you can see any job that's late or all jobs that are late. And of course, if it's green, obviously, it means that um, it's going to be early. So we scheduled this job just now before we got online. It's on time. And if your customer, in this case, Arrow Cryogenics, calls and says, well, can we expedite this? Can I get it quicker? Which is a, a typical sort of situation in a manufacturing environment. We can override the scheduler, and we can see the consequences. So if I double click on this, the system shows me our planning board, and it shows me the work which is lined up on all of the shop floor. So if I mark this up so you get a bit of an idea how this is, down the left-hand side here are all the resources that do the work for us. And these can be pieces of equipment like machines. They can be external operations. They can be departments, or they can be people. So they're listed here on the left-hand side. In terms of time, we're here today, which is on March the 10th. And I'm looking out until April the, uh, the 23rd. So that's a 45-day a, a window, and it's just convenient for me to look at that. But I can change that, and I can look 365 days out into the future, or I can look at any period of time in between. Our work orders are um, depicted by these colored blocks. There isn't anything significant in the colored block, except that it's there, the colors there to differentiate between the different operations and work orders. The time of the colored block is important because that's directly proportional to the amount of time a job will spend on the machine. So you can see we've got a small job here, which is about an hour, as opposed to here we've got a job which is going to take three days. And of course, because we've got a graphical scheduler, at any time, if I want, I can pick a job up in the schedule, move it up, move it back, put it to a different machine, or send it out to subcontract. So the particular job that we set up for this demonstration it's highlighted in white. And if I blind out all the other work, you can see exactly where this job is. So we're working five days a week. We don't work weekends. So you can see this particular job is going to start on a Friday. It's going to sit on this piece of equipment all over the weekend and then complete on Monday the 21st. Then it sits on the shop floor until this particular date when the next operation takes place. It's out for heat treatment. When it comes back, it's on this machine, and then it finally gets inspected here. And if I put all the other work back in, you can see why it is where it is. So at the moment, it's on time. Our customer wants it to be expedited. If I want, I can pick up one operation at a time, and I can move it. So if I want to pick in place, I'm able to do that. Alternatively, I can move this last operation, and that will move everything else up in front of it. So it's pretty easy to move operations around. Because Job Pack is a finite scheduler and understands there's a finite amount of in terms of hours per day and days per week, 
If I now go back to our production list that we were looking at earlier, I can see that I've moved this job in 28 days. So it's now going to be 28 days early, which of course is wonderful and it's going to make our customer Arrow Cryogenics very happy. But because Job Pack understands the finite capacity available, it's able to show me the consequences of expediting this job. So I've added four days to this job for this customer, three days to this job, two days to this job, and so on. So you're able to see the consequences of moving things around to address your customer's particular needs. I mentioned that we don't work weekends, and if you look where my mouse is now on this particular piece of equipment, you can see we're going to start this job on a Friday afternoon. It's going to sit on this piece of equipment all over the weekend, and we can complete it again on Monday. So I'm able to plug in additional hours on the fly, so I can say, well, we'll work for eight hours on a Saturday. We'll work for four hours on a Sunday, so we can move everything up there. So all the work's going to move in, and if I go back to where I was earlier, you can now see there's a knock-on effect and some more jobs have been now pulled in in terms of improving their delivery, but I've still got all these jobs that have been moved out. So now it's really a management decision. Do I want to accept these deliveries? And if I do, I can simply hit save and the system will now generate a new work to list for all the equipment on the shop floor. Alternatively, if I hit the reload button, then everything will go back to where it was before I started moving everything around manually. So we've got a, a nice what-if mechanism so that using job pack, you can schedule the work based on delivery date. You can then manipulate things manually to take account of various aspects and, and conditions that take place. And then if we don't like it, we can put it all back to where it was. And if you're not quite sure what to do, we have a utility called Snapshots so anything I do in terms of manipulating the schedule, I can actually save and create a snapshot, and that snapshot can be viewed by other people in the company, and if we want to implement that snapshot as a real schedule, we can simply say, right, load the snapshot, and everything will be loaded per our what-if situations. So that's in a, a brief overview sense how the job pack scheduler works and provides our customers with real information. You may have noticed that when I move this particular job, I've got this line here. So this is job pack telling me that I'm trying to schedule this particular operation on the 14th and there's a problem with it. And if I click on what we call the collision list, then the system can tell me what that problem is. And the system is telling me that for this manufacturing order, ERP VAR demo part that we're making 54, I have a problem that although it's in work, we have material missing. So I can see immediately what that material is. I can see when the delivery date for the material is. And now I've got two choices. I can either expedite the material so that we can get it in by the 14th, or alternatively, because I know I really can't do this job, I can move this operation back until the 18th, and the material will come in on the 15th, and then it will catch up with the job there. So I've got a lot of nice visual cues for the system being able to tell me when jobs are late and when material is due. Down on the shop floor, it's really simple for the operator to use. And now I'm kind of moving out of the office that I showed you earlier. And we're going to show you what the operator sees on the shop floor. So this interface is designed to be used either on a PC, which is how you're looking at it now, or it can be run on an iPad or on your iPhone or any smartphone for that matter. So the operator simply just clicks on the machine that he's responsible for and he gets a list of work orders that he's supposed to do and in the order that he's supposed to do them in. And all the operator has to do is to put in his employee number and click on the start icon. And now Job Pack knows that this job is in progress, it's on this machine, and it's being run by David Welsh. And of course, we can pick up any of this information and pass this back to your ERP system or send it out to some set of um, additional tables, intermediary tables, so that you can utilize it. So I hope that gives you a, uh, a good uh, kind of overview in terms of how Job Pack operates and what it looks like. And on that, Adrian, I'll pass it back to you. Thank you so much, David.
I'm going to go ahead and send it over to Chris Letner to talk about uh, Starship shipping software and how to optimize uh, the shipping component of this order fulfillment. So thank you, Chris. I'm handing you over presentation controls. Great. Thanks, Adrian. So just a couple quick slides, and then we'll get started on the Starship demo. A couple things with uh, Starship. I'm not going to get into every single enhancement. Just touch on a few things. Um, uh, recent carrier compliance for UPS, FedEx, post office with all the rate changes here in 2016. Uh, one big thing to look for is the uh, commercial plus pricing that we can now offer all our customers through Parcel Partners and Indicia. Um, in the past, you had to have a certain amount of volume in order to qualify for those discounts. Now, as, as part of uh, Starship and all of our customers, you're able to um, qualify for those, uh, whether you're shipping one package or a thousand. So nice feature. Uh, we've added the ability to uh, plug in an unlimited amount of user-defined fields into Starship. We've also uh, certified on the latest DHL API. Uh, Ship view rules are able to automate the carrier selection process. So if you want to take the decision out of the hands of the operator, you can add some business logic on routing the carriers uh, when, when rate shopping. Uh, we've added the ability to add some logic to the uh, custom email uh, option through eNotify as well, so you can have email templates that are assigned to a particular customer, a certain product. Um, the uh, rate quote utility is available. We've integrated that into Dynamics GP and sales order processing. There's also an API available if you want to call that from your front end uh, system through CRM, your shopping cart. Um, also have a new custom EDI module available for other uh, EDI providers uh, that you can bolt on the Starship in addition to the modules that we offer for Redtail and True Commerce and the ability to print 128 labels out of Starship for your various trading partners. Uh, for GP, uh, we have support for Dynamics GP 2015 R2. We've also introduced a uh, line item fulfillment option as well. Uh, GP Advanced Interface to Panatrack WMS. Uh, we have batch processing available for GP now, where you can select a range of orders and have them all processed together if you have uh, weights in your inventory. Also enhance the browse screen with some additional filters uh, to drill down into batches, customers, POs, um, some additional sorts um, when you're selecting transactions. We've added a uh, custom right back to GP's user-defined fields, uh, the ability to update the ship method. So if you do the rate shop and you want to reach back into GP and update the actual ship via code, you have the ability to do that. Uh, we can insert any of the uh, corrected address fields if you're using the address validation feature, as well as update the ship date. And as I mentioned, we have the rate quote utility uh, integrated now with sales order processing if you're running a 2013 or a 2015 of R2. All right, so let's take a look at the demo itself. One sec here. Uh, with GP, we're hooking into the sales order with the document ID, uh, the sales transaction, whether it's an order, it's a quote, it's an invoice, and you can enter or scan that here. You also have the ability to do a lookup. This is the new browse screen that we've added. We have the ability to pick the sequence and which fields you want to sort on. You also have the filters here. So let's say you want to just select a certain batch. You can drill down into that information there. You also have the ability to batch select transactions here as well. So if you want to multi-select several transactions, have them all processed at the same time, you can do that. But the typical workflow is to scan in a document ID off your pick ticket, and Starship kind of takes over from there. So let's go ahead and put in a sales transaction, and we'll ship out these products. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, you're going to see some detail about the sales order itself, uh, the company you're connected to. Starship has a multi-company connection with GP, so if you have different data sets of financials, that's included with the interface. Um, ship method, we'll do a value translation on that, or we can add the ship via rules if you want to kind of automate that carrier selection process. Uh, billing preference as well, we can bring over collect or third-party accounts from the customer card. Uh, transit time, if that's available for the carrier, you'll see that display here. Uh, your sender, that's your return address. Recipient, that's your ship to address, uh, either from the order header or the line item level in GP, that's your preference. If we take a look at the ship to address, you can see a little green checkbox there indicates that we've validated the address. So with that, we're checking the city, state, and zip. Uh, zip plus four for the postal formatting, if you choose that as a preference. Street address, the suite, the apartment number. 
And probably most importantly, the zone. Is it a residential address? Is it a rural area? Is it a commercial zone? And Starship will calculate any of the additional accessorial charges, tack on on top of the actual freight. We could push all that detail back into GP if you're capturing freight. I have a number of tabs up here. You can take a look at those. Clicking on the tabs, you have these views over here. When you're shipping freight, you also have the bill of lading view. I typically start on the packaging tab as if we're going to come in and assemble our shipments. Starship has a, a packaging database here where you can capture all of your different types of custom packaging and also store the weight and dimensions. Uh, Starship can also read the weight and dimensions in real time using CubaScan scales or any number of um, uh, popular brands of uh, different parcel scales. We can also use the weights from the GP inventory as well to calculate uh, the weight of the packages. You'll see that's pre-populated here, but you can always put the product on the scale and capture that weight in real time. Down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a number of products here. Those have defaulted into our most commonly used box, but we can add multiple packages to the shipment in a couple of ways. Click on the next arrow here. That'll add a box, and then we can choose to pack items into their own container and that allows us to do packing lists. We can also feed that data back into GP as well, so you can record exactly what the item distribution is per box. Multiple pieces, if you don't want to add them one at a time, you can just tell the system how many packages to enter, and uh, those will all be entered. Add a package, delete a package here, all the way to the right. When you're ready to process, you have your controls up here in the toolbar, or you have keyboard shortcuts. So you can also automate the process by creating barcodes for any of those keyboard shortcuts. F5 or ship and process, that's going to complete your transaction, move all those packages onto the manifest, and then we're going to push that data back into GP. Next to that, you have save as draft. So let's say you want to stage the order, maybe label some product, put it aside, come back to it. Uh, you have the ability to save that here as a draft. You can pick a future date as well. So you have the ability to stage this up to, uh, I believe, six months in advance. Uh, your order reference fields here, your customer PO number as well. Those are available to print out any of the um, uh, paperwork that you uh, print out for the carriers and your labels and can be uploaded into the carrier tracking system. You have a number of user-defined fields here and you can also add an unlimited number of user-defined fields through the system preferences. So you can keep growing the database similar to the uh, GP extender module. There's no additional licensing that you need for that. So you can just go in and add additional fields you have those at the shipment level, package level, pallet level, item, and order level. I mentioned you can rate shop here, or you can pick the different carriers. We're going to go ahead and click on the dollar sign. This is going to call out to all the various carrier options that we have loaded on the Starship system. You also have the uh, rate quote utility. This is a browser-based utility that can be used uh, in the front office for any of your customer service people, sales reps that want to calculate freight at the point that they're taking the order, and that can be invoked directly from the sales order screen when you're in sales order processing. Here at the point that we're going to ship that, we can rate shop, we can sort here by the price, the transit time, or alphabetically by the carrier. We'll go ahead and stick with the selected service that came over from GP. If we decide that we want to actually pick a different service here, then Starship now has the ability to reach back into GP and update that ship method that was actually used. So click on uh, Ship and Process, F5, that will print out all our documents, send that detail back into GP, and we'll see a preview here of our shipping label and packing list in just a moment. You have both thermal and laser options available. Starship can also produce PDFs of any of the documents as well if you want to send those out as attachments. You can see here kind of a hybrid form. You have the packing list and the label together. You have multiple formats of those can also be branded with any of your company information, logos, graphics, etc. So with that, we've processed the transaction. The cursor is going to move back here to the area where we're going to scan the next order. So let's take a look back in GP now at the results. All right, so main areas that we're updating in GP, you have the order header comments or notes here. This is going to give you a breakdown of the order detail. This is standard text that's included, but you have the ability to customize this with uh, all the tags here next to each individual string of data, uh, the sequence of the information, and any additional fields that you want to insert into this note. That's a standard feature. So it's going to tell you some basic information about the shipment, when it went out, when it's going to get there, how many pieces there were, and then a little breakdown, kind of a packing list of what went into each box with the tracking number and the contents and quantity. 
Starship can also update the batch ID, so that helps you if you want to nudge the shipment along the workflow a little further, automating the uh, billing process, you can trigger stored procedures that way as well. Uh, the freight field, we're going to update that here. That can include any kind of additional handling or markups, discounts that you want to apply to freight, or also conditions where you may not want to charge freight. We can also insert records into the user-defined field. So you have all those that can be updated. I've taken my cost and inserted it here. So we can see my exposure on the freight is $29.44. We're actually charging the customer $44.44. We've marked that up 15 bucks. You can see our profit and profit margin there if we want to run a smart list to see what the difference is. All the tracking information. So if you're shipping parcels, you have a tracking number here for each box. If you're shipping freight, you'll have the pro number or the bill of lading number here. Some other fields that we can update, I mentioned there's uh, preferences, uh, you have uh, the ship method. So if we chose a different uh, ship method, we can update that here as well, as well as all of the address information. So if we do the address validation, we have the ability to reach back into the GP database and update all of the actual uh, corrected address information as well. Actual ship date can also be updated. So let's look at the basic workflow with GP. I'm going to touch upon a couple of other additional utilities that you get with the solution. Uh, you have the e-notify option, which is a custom email program that is included with Starship. There's no additional fees for that. And that gives you the ability to add some custom uh, notifications uh, for uh, when you're shipping out, uh, any edits that are made to the shipments. You can add any formatting changes that you'd like here with any fields, uh, blocks of text, tables, or graphics. Do some branding where you can change the look and feel the layout of the email with your own colors, fonts, and uh, background images, links. Basically make it look nice and pretty. You also have the ability to include attachments, so if you want to send along a catalog, a warranty, or any of the shipping documents, those can be dynamically inserted as attachments into the email. So if you want to send a customer a copy of your packing list, the bill of lading, any export docs, whatever, documents are created with the ship and you have the ability to have those inserted. Hopefully if you're notifying your customers proactively, that's going to cut down on the number of customer service calls you're going to receive. Of course, you can always look back into GP to see the status of the shipment. That'll stay with the life of the transaction. We also give you a customer service tool with Starship. It's the dashboard. It gives you the ability to do some lookups uh, in the browser without taking up any of your GP licenses. It doesn't take up any Starship seats either. And gives you the ability to do some lookups here by any of the common GP fields, uh, order, invoice number, customer ID, PO, any of the address fields. Uh, there's also date sorts where you can narrow down uh, the shipment to find exactly what you're looking for. Once you find that, you have the access to all the tracking information here, various products and items, quantities that you've shipped, breakdown of the freight charges, any special services that may have been used, and then detail on the shipping status. You also have these widgets here, which are some uh, fine sorts that you have the ability to uh, drill down into the data further by carrier, location, mode of transport, status, uh, by user, so you can track users' activity on the system, and also your top five customers. There's crystal reports that are built into Starship as well, so you have the ability to run some reports here. If you're running GP, uh, typically you have a smart list. We can insert records into GP. We also have a SQL extension for Starship where we can read and write data to extender, uh, sales pad, CRM, your shopping cart, wh whatever other platforms you may be using. All of Starship's data is in SQL as well. There are views that are published, so you can easily query the, our database and extract what you need directly from Starship. Okay, Adrian, that's uh, pretty much what I had prepared for today. Thank you, everybody, for presenting your solutions. I'm going to go ahead and flash the contact information up while I announce the questions. We do have uh, several questions, so hopefully you can see all the contact information. And I do have some poll, uh, just one poll, I'd like to ask the audience while we're announcing the questions. So if audience, if you could just pay attention to your screen and just answer this one simple poll. Um, we do have several questions I will announce. Um, are you interested in learning more about any of the following? So you can select one or more of the following that you're interested in learning more about. And our uh, first question is from Chris. Chris, thank you so much. 
How would job pack work with SalesPad? David. Hi, thank you. Sorry, could you repeat the question? The question is, how would job pack work with SalesPad? And uh, SalesPad is, I believe, um, a CRM that integrates with Dynamics GP, if I'm correct. And uh, um, are you familiar with that application, David? I'm not, a, I'm not familiar with that particular CRM, but um, the way that we could interact or we do interact with any other application, really, whether it's a CRM or an ERP system or a part of an ERP system, is if you can uh, tell us the um, table and the field name, we can interrogate the database through that EAI module and we can read in the information that you want and any information that you acquire within job pack we can put back into a set of complementary tables. The um, job pack database is completely open and documented. It's a Microsoft SQL database. So if you want to look through the tables that we've got and you want to you want us to marry up tables in your application and import that data into job pack, we can do that and the timing of it can be uh, on an interval every 10 minutes, 15 minutes or whatever or alternatively we can do it on a a daily basis at a specific time. Perfect. And we have another question here from Dan. Thank you so much, Dan, for your question. What label printer software does Starship use? Uh, Chris. Thanks for the question, Dan. Uh, we actually uh, support Zebra, uh, ZPL2, and Eltron EPL2 printer language. Uh, Starship will output to a 203 DPI printer, not the 300. So there's a list of compatible printers in our documentation. I'd be happy to forward that over to you. And we are at 61% of you in the audience who have voted on this poll. Would love it if we could get to 100%. That would be awesome. And uh, Chris has another question about job pack. Uh, does job pack provide product allocation based on next available date? How does it interact with POs? Okay, thanks for the question. Um, if you're using the project version of job pack, then we can provide allocation with regards to bill of materials. Um, in respect to POs over from an ERP system, generally speaking, the important thing for us is the delivery date on the PO and it's really the status of the PO. So if the PO has been uh, fulfilled and the goods or the material is inside the company, then that's more than adequate for the scheduling side of it. However, if you want to pull the actual PO number and the um, supplier within that purchase order number over to job pack so that it can be reviewed inside a job pack if you see that material isn't available, then we can do that as well. But there's a point where you sort of um, you start importing so much information that you're trying to replicate the functionality of your ERP system in job pack because there is a, a lot of duplication in terms of functionality with some ERP systems and job pack. So I think you just need to keep an eye on the, the original objective of job pack is to schedule work and give you information in terms of the status of jobs and more importantly to advise you when jobs are going to be late before they're late and allow you to take that remedial action. But if you want us to import that information with regard to the purchase order and or the data relevant to it, we can do that. And we have another question from Dan. Thank you, Dan. Does Starship work well with SalesPad? And Chris, are you familiar with SalesPad? I know they're very popular in the Dynamics community. <coughs> I am. So SalesPad isn't exactly a CRM. It's more of a uh, order entry module that sits on top of the Dynamics GP database. But um, yes, we have customers in common with SalesPad. We don't link directly to SalesPad's tables, but we can get to the uh, custom fields in SalesPad and to read from those and also push data back to SalesPad directly through the SQL extension in Starship. So, you know, the core financials and all the, the standard GP data that uh, lives underneath SalesPad is, is part of the standard Starship integration and then through some SQL programming we can get to pretty much anything in SalesPad so absolutely can be done. And 
uh, Dan has a further um, elaboration in regard to the previous label printer software question he had. Um, does Starship have its own label designer software, or does it use a third party? So I just want to make sure we're clear on answering that question. Chris, sure. I don't mean to be sure. redundant. So um, a lot of the labels are uh, not necessarily designed within Starship. It's typically like a PNG file that comes back from the carrier if the carrier is generating the label image through the web service, and then it's brought into Starship, and then encoded in the Zebra or Eltron printer language, sent to the printer, and that's where it prints out. Um, the label designer software inside of Starship itself for labels and documents that we create is proprietary to Starship. It's not in any particular format. If you're familiar with working with Crystal, it's a YC wig or you know, drag and drop type of user interface to do label design that's built into the program, but it's not like a third party solution that's uh, uh, embedded within Starship. And we are at 82% of the audience who have voted. So we have 18% of you who have not voted. We would love to get your vote on this poll. And then I will uh, show the contact information. I just want to remind everyone we are recording this webinar. And we'll be sending out the recording after uh, we are done here, along with everybody's contact information. Um, it looks like we have a question from Jim. Jim, thank you so much for this question. Does Job Pack integrate to GP manufacturing? Uh, the obvious answer to that, yeah, and thank you for the question. The answer is yes. And it, it's the same process as with any ERP system. The manufacturing module uh, that's available within your system allows you to define the operations and it allows you to put in the time for setup and the time for actually producing the work. And that's the information that we read over, which is essentially the routing of the process for any particular job. And Dan is clarifying here, SalesPad is a front end for SOP transaction processing as well as CRM. Thank you, Dan, for that clarification. And we have a question from Kai. How do you determine the shipping price in GP prior to shipping it without having it go to the shipping department UPS system? Thank you for that question. Great question. Good question. That's the million dollar question. Uh, so while there may be weights and in inventory, GP doesn't really have any packaging logic that is native to the inventory. So um, you're relying on the operator of the program to have some tribal knowledge about the way things are packed. Without some sort of programming wrapped around the inventory, there's really no way of knowing that. So the total weight will come over, and then they have to uh, give the best guesstimate on how the items are allocated to however many packages or pallets there are. So. In conjunction with our solution, there is also the uh, Blue Moon Freight Matrix that can be snapped onto GP's inventory. Uh, they have uh, written some code to call our API in order to um, produce those, uh, those accurate freight quotes using the actual negotiated rates in the carrier's web services. That's one method. Uh, there's also some other third-party solutions um, that could be integrated into GP as well that can give you uh, both package and pallet uh, level detail, but they're, they're fairly expensive and uh, you know, quite a long implementation process to build in all that type of multi-piece, multi-product uh, logic around your inventory. But it, it is doable. Uh, but most people just, uh, they take the total weight and they divide it across however many packages they make their best guess at, and, uh, and that's what they live by with the freight quote. And um, just an elaboration to that question, Chris, what version of uh, GP? Um, for Starship, we're integrated with, uh, we're, we're still supporting uh, Great Plains 8 or higher. Um, the hook from sales order processing was first added with web services in GP 2013, uh, GP 2015, and 2015 R2. Okay, could be bolted onto anything, though. And he says that um, he's on GP9, so this is all possible, even if he's on GP9, but he does need to move to GP2013. So yeah. we'll work on all of those. Yes, Starship itself is compatible with GP9 still, but that hook from sales order processing to call the rate quote utility is only 2013 or higher. 
And uh, Kristen, in the event of an audit, um, does Avalara have any resources to help? We do, we do. We have a professional service side of things which can help with audit defense. We can also do, you know, nexus studies helping with registration, uh, deregistration, and um, tax analysis. But the audit defense is something we definitely help with. And I'm not seeing any more questions, and we have one minute to spare. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We are still at 88% voted, so I'm going to leave this poll up here for another 30 seconds or so and then flash the contact information up. We're at 94%. Yay! Can we get the needle to move to 100%? That would be awesome. Um, and thank you, everybody, the presenters, for joining us today and giving us your excellent presentations. Um, would you guys like to um, provide any cl closing comments, Kristen, Chris, Dave? Yes, thank you very much for your, your time and your interest in our, um, in our solution to enhance ERP systems. Thank you for that from Jobpack. Yep, we appreciate it. Thanks, and have a good day, guys. You too. Thank you. And Chris, thank you so much, everybody. Yep. Have a fantastic thank you, everybody. Weekend. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay.